This is the Horse Radio Network. I'm Glenn the Geek. And I'm Samantha Clark from the 2010 Radio Show. We are interrupting your regularly scheduled program, uh, which will be back here in just a minute or two after Samantha and I tell you about something we're very excited about that the Horse Radio Network is participating in. And that is the first ever Para Webathon to help raise money for the Para Equestrian team attending the World Equestrian Games this year. Well, Samantha, as you know, we are, we are very involved in the World Equestrian Games and we love the Para athletes that are attending the games we do and this is the first year this is the first time that they'll be riding alongside the able-bodied athletes and we'll have eight disciplines all together and we want to help them we want to help them come here we want to help fund them they don't get much help and uh, we're going to do everything we can to to alleviate that and we're doing that with a telethon a jerry lewis type telethon that we're doing on june the 8th it's a tuesday evening June the 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. It'll be a video telethon where we'll have many of the para-athletes that are going to be attending the games are flying in here to Lexington to join us in the Alltech TV studio. So this will be broadcast live through many, many websites across the Internet. You can find it, though, at horseradionetwork.com. It'll be right on the homepage there from 7 to 9 p.m. And we encourage you to watch. We're going to be telling the stories of some of these tremendous athletes. Tell us who's going to be here. Well, I will be co-hosting it with our spotlight rider from the 2010 radio show, Susan Trebus. She's a para-equestrian rider, and she is hoping to be selected and ride at the World Equestrian Games this year. We also have the team coach, Missy Ranshausen, coming in. We also have the three times national para-equestrian champion, Becca Hart, coming in, as well as Hope Hand, who's the president of the association. And we have um, a number of guests calling in, some special guests that will keep us a surprise. And uh, we encourage everyone to call in and donate and, and to watch. And, and I think the general consensus is that most people are just inspired and humbled and, and honored to be involved, which I am too. And when you hear the stories of what, what these athletes, Olympic-level athletes, have overcome to get to where they are, it's just amazing. And we're hoping to tell those stories on Tuesday night, June the 8th, from 7 to 9 p.m. We want you to join us. We would encourage you to donate, whether it's $5, $10, whatever it is. We'll have a phone bank set up, thanks to the help of the good folks over at Alltech. And we'll be, we'll be doing it like Jerry Lewis-like, which means that uh, Samantha will be singing <laughs> We and will not be singing and dancing, Glenn. <laughs> but we will be, we'll be talking and chatting and, and sharing stories, like you said. And um, it'll be fantastic. Please join us. First ever, let's make it a success. June the 8th from 7 to 9 p.m. Go to horseradionetwork.com to watch it. We'd be happy to have you join us. This is episode 94 of the Stable Scoop Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, the amazing Amigo. Please support our sponsors as they make this show possible. Equestrian Collections brings the whole universe of equestrian shopping to your fingertips. Visit them at equestriancollections.com. And The Barnworks. For all of your equine marketing needs, visit them at thebarnworks.com. Welcome to the Stable Scoop, with weekly shows delivered right to you. With Helena and Glenn the Geek, live from the stable, it's every week. They bring you the news through hail or hot water, while using their tails as their own fly swatters. So sit on down and laugh till your poop, cause it's time again for Stable School. Stable Scoop Stable Scoop Stable Scoop This is Glenn the Geek And this is Helena B And you're listening to the Stable Scoop Radio Show On the Horse Radio Network Well hi Helena Hi Glenn I I promise I won't hang up on you this time (laughs) We've been having uh, some technical difficulties here today well, but we're getting through it, aren't we? We're we troopers. Are. We are. Well, because this is our favorite show. And you know what? We Even if it doesn't come out perfect, it comes out great. It comes out great. That's right. And you know what? I kept you in the dark about today's show, didn't I? Yeah, thanks. What's yeah. up here? Well, What's I did that? it because I, th- I knew that you were really going to 
get into the story that we're going to talk about today. And I knew it was the kind of thing that would make you cry and would make you all emotional and everything. Thanks, so you kept me in the dark because you knew why, I'd be a hot mess that's, afterwards. That's right. Yeah. So we, that's why I did. And But now you're going to find out. We're, we're actually doing two things today. One is we're getting our update with Kathleen on her wild ride. And let me tell you, Kathleen's wild ride is continuing to be pretty wild. Um, she... She, I spoke with her earlier in the day. You didn't have the opportunity to join us, but she, um, she, she had uh, some sad news this week and this past week, and and then she's also had some inspiring stories of some people she met. Mm. So there's a little bit of everything in Kathleen's wild ride. Like I'm imagining that there's going to be every week. <laughs> so, so I'm going to have to listen to that section of the show once we go live. Yes, you are, because uh, Kathleen is having quite a quite an experience. And then we speak with Gary Sanderson. And have you ever heard of Amigo? Nope. Well, Amigo yep. is one amazing horse. And Amigo, I, that's all I'm going to say till we get Gary on. It is just an amazing story of an amazing horse and some amazing parents. And has caused quite a stir on Facebook with almost 10,000 fans on their fa- on Amigo's uh fan page. So we're going to speak with Amigo, or with Gary. We're going to speak with Amigo. We're going to speak with Gary. Why not? We, <laughs> this horse is so amazing, he could probably he tell us talk, his own story. Mr. Ed. Uh, so Gary's going to come on with us, who's now affectionately referred to as Amigo's dad, and going to tell us the story of Amigo, and what an amazing story. It will, I guarantee that in the middle of this story, and I've heard him, he talked to me yesterday, and I've read all the articles, you're going to be crying. I promise you're going to be a blubbering idiot by the middle of this story. So there we go. That's something to look forward to for today. Yeah, uh, all right. Yeah, we've been having too much of a good time with Stable Scoop, I guess. I know. You know give me something that would bring me down to earth. But it's an inspiring story, and it, it has a happy ending. Let's, yeah. So let's go there. Okay. okay. All right. And, and you're still riding your new, your new toy? I am. Yeah, we had a little bit of a setback, though. Really? Uh, yeah, we have... Um, we're not quite sure what's going on, but it, it all signs are pointing to a problem with the SI joint, which is the, the joint in the horse's spine, which connects the, um, the lower lumbar region with the sacrum somewhere around the pelvis. So we have to get a chiropractor out there and see what's going on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't ride right now? You've ridden and now you can't ride? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. I He's understand. awesome, and I, I, I love him dearly, and we're heading down the same road. So. Um, All right. We'll get him fixed up. I get, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, take a, let's, do, let's take a commercial break for Equestrian Collections, who are our friends over there in Virginia who are doing some great things. And then we'll come back, and we'll speak to Kathleen and, and Kathleen's Wild Ride update. And uh, I think everybody's going to want to hear this. Uh, There's some sad news and some happy news, so let's uh, come back with Kathleen. We're excited to announce this week that Equestrian Collections has a new coupon code for listeners of the Horse Radio Network. As you know by now, if you need anything for your horse, the barn, or you, the place to find it is Equestrian Collections. They have a whole universe of equestrian shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford. And now you can get $10 off your next order of $120 or more by using the coupon code 10DISCOUNT at checkout. That's the numbers 10 followed by the word discount at checkout to get these fantastic savings. All of us at the Horse Radio Network would ask you to stop by equestriancollections.com the next time you need anything horsey and give them a shot. That's equestriancollections.com. Well, Helena, we're back, and we're going to be speaking with Kathleen uh, Dodds, who is the one doing the cross-country adventure that we follow every week. You can go back to our past episodes and listen to her updates. This is like her third weekend, if I remember correctly. She started the middle of May. That went quick. I know. Isn't that amazing? She, I think it went Although to her for us. Like <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Sorry, Kathleen. No offense. But... <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> just going to say. So let's, let's hear what Kathleen's up to. Well, hi, Kathleen, and welcome back to the Stable Scoop Show for the Kathleen's Wild Ride Update. And your the name of your update, uh, you're living up to it, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, we have to start with, we had a little bit of sad news over the last week since we talked to you last, and that's your poor dog, Solo. Yeah, unfortunately, I lost Solo here in the last couple of days. And he, he was an older dog anyway, wasn't he? 
Yeah, he was an older dog, and I was, you know, worried that he wouldn't make the trip, but I really didn't have a choice but to bring him with me, so... And he was happy the whole time he was with me, no matter what I asked him to do. And he just basically had a heart attack and passed away. He Uh, did. He had a heart attack coming into the city of Spray. So I had to lay him to rest next to a really pretty spot by the river. Well, I'll tell you what, on behalf of all our listeners, we, we send our sympathies. I know what that's like. We had our Greyhound put down on Valentine's Day this year. So I know exactly what that's like. We're, uh, well, Lena and I are both dog lovers, so we are our best to you for that. Um, now, you, you actually are on a ridgeline, it looks like, in Oregon, at, in some t- meeting up with some people in some tiny little towns. <laughs> Yes, I am, and I have to say that this has made my trip the most amazing thing that you could possibly imagine, because the people I'm meeting in these towns are, you know, above and beyond the most wonderful people I have ever met. Wow. And I've met some really cool people in the last few days, even after having such a hard day the other day, losing my dog. When I got to the city of Spray, they were so kind and helpful that they just, you know, put me up in the corrals at the rodeo grounds and gave me hay and wouldn't hear me paying for it. And and I got there and everybody in town kept telling me the same thing, that when I get to the next town, which was Kimberly, that I should look up Jody Foss and that she would be so excited to see me. Okay. And so did you? I, did I you? There. Yeah, I, I rode into Kimberly and I stopped at the post office to see if I had any packages. And the postmistress said the same thing. <laughs> And so I'm, I said, okay, well, I'm headed out that way, so I'll stop by. And away I went, and when I got about halfway to her house, a small car passed me, and the guy stopped and opened the window and opened his head up, and he goes, you're Kathleen, aren't you? <laughs> and I said, yes, and he smiled, and he said, well, my daughter Emma is the girl that worked at the cafe that you stopped at in Spray, which, by the way, is the best bacon cheeseburger I've had on this entire trip. <laughs> so you still are getting your cheeseburgers then. Oh, yeah, and I decided I'm going to start ranking them. And Emma at the, the small cafe in Mini Mart in Spray has made the best one I've ever had. Oh, there you go. Well, that says a lot. Yeah, but the guy that stopped me was her dad. And he told me, he's like, you're going to stay the night with us because my wife will be ecstatic when she hears who you are. Because all he <laughs> told her was that somebody cool was coming to town and that they were going to stay, that I was going to stay with them. And so I got, I said, sure, no problem. And I head on down the road to their place. And as I ride up, I see this herd of mules come charging up to the gate. <laughs> and I realize who Jody Foss is. And she is a legend amongst long riders. She has written several books, uh, one of which is called Riding with Mules. And she goes on these long, long rides, so, you know, thousands of mile ride and trek on muleback. Oh, wow. And she was just absolutely ecstatic for me to be there, and her and her husband welcomed me with open arms and put my horses up and fed them and wouldn't let me do anything while I was there and cooked me this huge dinner <laughs> and let me stay in one of their cabins on their property. Well, you know, Jody she, Foss, you, you, you know, you, you're right. She is. She actually has a website called uh, MulesAcrossAmerica.com, yep. and she's yes, one of the does. biggest advocates for mules in the country, pretty much. Um, yes, well, how is. cool is that? Are- it's amazing. I mean, it was so cool to meet her, and she's such a wonderful woman. She has actually found me lodging for the next five towns. That's where I am right now. I'm staying. Last night, I stayed at a bed and breakfast here in Bayville. It belongs to um, Kelly Cooper, who is a really good friend of hers, who also put my horses up. And then I have a place to stay for the next five towns because of Jody. Wow, that's terrific. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just, she's just excited, and it's been a really good time. I've been having, you know, this really good time for the last couple of days, which has really helped me with the, you know, the way I've been feeling with losing Solo. Now, have you, uh, I, you know, I asked you this last week, have you, uh, other than losing Solo, have you found uh, anything to be particularly more difficult this week? Or or was it, was it a better <laughs> week other than Solo, of course? Um, the only thing that's been more difficult is I'm riding longer. I mean, I did a couple 19 mile days and I did 25 miles yesterday and I'll do 23 miles today and I have to say that my backside is incredibly sore. <laughs> <laughs> I know off the air last week I asked you how your butt was and uh, yeah. I said I said you know only two horse people could ask that question and get away with it right? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And you said, yeah, I, saw, got here last night. <laughs> I saw in your blogs that you're still losing weight. Yeah I've lost a couple more pounds. So we'll just keep slowly working at it. You're going to have to buy a whole new set of clothes by the time you get halfway across the country. 
I hope so. All that I makes me happy. Now, do you ride? I did have uh, I did have actually an email or two, and the question was: Are you riding in chaps or half chaps, or are you just ride? What are you riding in? Actually, right now I'm just riding in breeches. Um, my half chaps don't fit me, but I'm having a friend of them send them send them to me in another week or two, so hopefully I can get back into them. Okay, uh, so, so you're just, you're riding in breeches currently. Yes, breeches and, and um, hiking boots actually. Oh wow! Okay, have you had to get off and walk a lot? I get off about every eight to ten miles and walk for a couple miles. I have to get my butt the best feeling again. again. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's just for your backside's benefit. Um, now, have you had to cross any uh, major streams or, or rivers or anything? No, but yesterday I did actually have to go across a bridge that's under construction, and it's down to one lane. It's got a crane off to one side of it oh, that no. is moving stuff around, and there's cones and flashing lights, and I was a little concerned, but both of these horses just kind of went, oh, look, a bridge, oh, they're constructing on it, and he just walked across. So the Appies, are, are they getting better? You, 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 were, you were having a little bit of a tough time in the first week or two getting to know them. Um, how's, yeah. How's that going? Well, they're really good under saddle, I mean, really good under saddle. Sometimes on their ground manners, they have a little bit of issues with my personal space. But they're starting to get better. Well, they're tired. Oh, yeah, we're getting it together. <laughs> they always get better when they're a little tired. Um. Yeah, they do. They get a little bit more respectful <laughs> when they're like, "Oh, okay." So they're you're just, you're they actually just picking up whenever they want. You're actually picking up speed now that that you don't have solo. Actually, that's one of the benefits yeah. of not having solo along. Yeah, I, I'm able to go for longer because I was limited to eight to twelve miles a day with solo. So now, now, have I, you come across any of the bears or uh, a wildlife that you were afraid of? You know, in all honesty, I haven't. I saw one bear when I was on Mount Hood, and it was about a half a mile away. It took me about three minutes to realize what it was. Uh, other than that, I didn't see deer. Yeah. Well, and you know, again, you're in you're in a rugged part of the country too, and it's it, you're in an interesting part of the country because it is rugged. Rugged, and your scenery changes. It's when you get to Kansas and Nebraska that uh, things are going to flatten out a little, and you're going to have miles of monotony. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, is I'm riding on some of the scenic highways, and this is the most beautiful part of this country. You know, of Oregon, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. I'm riding through what they call the Painted Hills. Yep. It's it's so gorgeous. I don't understand why more people don't drive these highways. Because I'll be riding along, and the, the rock formations are just unbelievable, and the, the rivers and the streams. and it's just, so there's, I was riding along one way, and I turned and looked over, and there's this creek running down to the river, to the John Day River, that is literally the color of pea soup. It is green, huh. and it's from the, the copper in the rocks. And so it just turns the, the water bright green. <laughs> and it was just it was the coolest thing to see. It's a, and you didn't know along the way that you'd be getting a uh, geology lesson, too. No, I didn't. I got actually <laughs> past several of the John Day fossil beds and stopped in, and they are amazing. You're actually... So, I mean, the area is really cool. We should tell everybody that the area you're in in Oregon right now, which is near um, Mount Vernon, Oregon, is 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 in the middle of three huge national forests. So you are yes, right. You, you are right. The towns you're seeing are the only thing around. Um, yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. So those few people that live in each town, they don't. Uh, you got to wonder where they work, don't you? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, this is terrific, <laughs> Kathleen. Um, we obviously will keep up with you. We want to tell everybody the best place to keep up with you right now is either on your blog and tell everybody what your blog is. If you might think this is crazy, blogspot dot com or on Facebook. Actually, there's more updates going up on Facebook. So just lear- look for, yeah. search for Kathleen's Wild Ride on Facebook and become a fan and a friend. And you can follow her progress. Her friend Mary is posting there, and I'm posting there. So we're trying to keep you up to date on Kathleen and her adventures across the country here. So we'll talk to you again next week. Good luck, and uh, we hope that you put some miles un- under your uh, under your belt over the next week. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Glenn.
Well, I know you did. You you haven't heard that interview yet, but Kathleen has had some time, and I I know that you do know that she did lo- lose Solo, her her doggy, along the way there, and buried him by a stream in a beautiful valley, apparently. Hmm. Um, and she was very sad about that. But you know, Solo was older. I didn't realize that Solo was, I think, ten or eleven. Hmm. Um, and you know, it probably was a situation where where he would have went anyway. You know, right. it was right. it was at that age. But you know, she was counting on him being. Along. The one thing it has done for, as she mentioned, is it sped up her trip. Mm-hmm. Instead of doing 10 to 12 miles a day, now she does 25 to 30. Wow. So big she, difference. Yeah, it's a big difference there. And, and uh, I think she's enjoying, you know, getting on with it a little mm-hmm. faster. You know, um, I, I think that this, this Kathleen's Wild Ride is, um, is going to be a really accurate representation of life in general. Yes. There's going to be a lot of just broader life lessons learned and, and, you know, one of those is you, you have good news and you have sad news in life. And unfortunately for her, this week had both. Right. She had the good, she, you know, she, she met some amazing people, as she cool. talked yeah. about, and, you know, and ate the best uh, ch- bacon cheeseburger she's ever eaten in her life. So, <laughs> that makes me jealous. So, I, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat one right now, as a matter of fact. If you own a horse business of any kind, wholesale, retail, a stable, a training business, or you're a professional rider and need a new website, then it's time for you to call the Barnworks. The Barnworks will update that website of yours into the 21st century. You know, websites need updated every two to three years. How long has it been since you did yours? Speak to the Barnworks before you commit to anyone else. That is thebarnworks.com for all your website development needs. All right, so let's uh, let's get to our next guest, who is Gary Sanderson, better known as Amigo's dad. And this is the story of Amigo, who is an Arab uh, endurance horse. And I think that I think that you're going to be fascinated, you're going to cry, and then you're going to smile at the end. So let's talk to Gary about Amigo's story. Well, hi, Gary, and welcome to the Stable Scoop Radio Show. I, you know, I wish that we were talking to you about a situation that had never happened, but, uh, but that's not the case, and here we are. And, you know, I think you're for, you were formerly known as Gary, and now, yeah, you're just, right. now you're just Amigo's dad. Right, lost my identity on January the 17th. <laughs> All right, so let's back up. Tell us a little bit about you and your history with horses. Well, I started in horses in uh, 1994 or so. I uh, was actually, I grew up on the beach, skipping school to go surfing and that kind of thing, and had never been around or even seen horses when I was growing up. But I always kind of wanted to be a cowboy. And then when I got to be, uh, I don't know, know, how old was I, 94. Anyway, I met this girl that had horses, and I started riding, and she said one day, she said, you've never been around horses. And I said, no. And she said, that's odd because you have a God-given gift with them. And so I got into horseback riding and ownership. The, the girlfriend went away and the horses stayed. Um, <laughs> that in, in 1996, and I purchased uh, my first horse in 96 and have been in it ever since. And, uh, and let's see, I did mounted patrol in North Carolina, did search and rescue on horseback, um, crowd control, Friday night football games, parades, all that kind of stuff. So that particular horse was, is very desensitized. And then in 2005, I met this little Arab named Amigo, and I started doing endurance in 2005. And he uh, has 770 miles, almost 800 miles of endurance. He wow. finishes top 10 probably 85% wow. of the time. In 2008, he was the... Uh, fifth middleweight in the southeast and we've ridden together in eight or nine states together and uh, have been competing ever since were you doing uh, the 25 50 mile rides 50 miles yeah. yeah wow that's great we nothing like going miles. from not into horses to riding 50 right. miles at a time there gary you know okay, that's no, nothing like, like going from goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> from zero to 60 nothing on like. a horse <laughs> Well, nothing like going from a surfboard to a horse. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you know what? That's not too much of a stretch. You know, they're, they're both moving bodies, and some could say the ocean has a mind of its own. That's right. That's right. Either way, they're uh, both, they both 
command a lot of respect. And if you fall off, you you either drown or get scraped up or busted up bones. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so an amigo so, is how old? Well, amigo turned 10 on April the 11th and while was he, he was still over at UT. Was he an endurance horse before you met him? No, he was uh, plump and fat and sitting over in Kara's pasture <laughs> and causing problems, uh, tearing boards off the barn, chasing her mares, and that kind of thing. And she informed me that if he didn't go with me, he was going somewhere. Uh, I think that she loves all animals, uh, but she had bonded with another horse that she had gotten, and, uh, and I think Amigo was kind of relegated to third place over there. When I got him, he was... I don't know. And you'd ride him, and he'd be bow-legged for a couple of days because he was so fat. Uh, <laughs> and that's, pretty, him... that's saying a lot for an Arab, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, but once he started getting into condition, and he and I developed the 65-35 relationship that you like to have with your horses, he was awesome. He was, uh, he was my champion. He was my competitive horse. You mean he was 65, you were 35? No, well, you'd like to think I was 65. There has to be an alpha in the relationship, but uh, no, I, I, you have to take the reins on them. You know, you know, you, somebody has to have the lead, and I'd hate for the horse. Now, I've been in situations where the horse has had the lead, but ideally, the human needs to have their lead. But you need to develop a bond, I think, between horse and rider. And we, but we've all That's had the, those horses that have been the other way. You know that uh, they've had the lead no matter what you do. So we've all been okay. down that road too. All right, so let's go to January of this year, right, 2010, right? Right, okay. January the 17th. And you guys live uh, where, in Tennessee? Yeah, we're in eastern Tennessee, okay. and uh, the week before, uh, 17th, uh, we had had a lot of snow and ice. We had had a bunch of rain recently, and on the night of the 16th, we had very high wind warnings, 60, 65 miles an hour winds, and... Uh, I had gotten home late and fed them late because Carrie and I had gone to see a movie, and everybody was fine at 10.30 and at I night on the 16th. I you remember which movie it was, too, don't you? I do. You want me to advertise for them? It's Sherlock Holmes, my boy. Uh, uh, okay. Anyway, um, anyway, the night of the 16th, I fed late, and everybody was fine. And then on the 17th, it rained in the morning, and we were going to take a, a friend of ours' horse up to a round pen that I have up on a hill. It stopped raining about 2, 2.30, uh, something like that. And I went up to check the round pin to make sure it had drained properly. And I came back down. I actually found, uh, took another route back down, and that led me past the back end of my barn. And there standing there was Amigo at the back gate. And as I approached, I said, what are you doing down here without your brothers? Talking about my other two horses. And he neighed at me. And I went to the back gate to open the gate, and I noticed he didn't turn to come in the gate. That's when I went around to the left side of him and found the uh, infamous stick. Um, he had been impaled above his left shoulder uh, by a cedar limb, a green cedar limb that was two inches in diameter. And uh, at that time, I didn't know how long, because six inches of it was sticking out of the horse, but approximately three feet long. Yeah, we're looking at the picture here, and I warned Helena before she looked at the picture. I said, you be prepared for this because it's not something you've ever seen before. Oh, it was gruesome, as you can imagine, it about floored me. Um, and he was standing up he, when you saw him, though. He was standing up. Now, keep in mind, all these horses are on 110 acres. Probably 30 of it is wooded that uh -huh. I rent. So leave we're not to, sure. Leave it to horses. You 100 acres to run around, and he, he finds the one stick, right? Well, I don't know if a limb, if a tree fell on Helena or whether or not he he ran underneath it and it was at an angle or what yeah. happened to him. Yeah, because did he have any other signs that he'd been through, you know, that he'd, he'd gotten beaten uh, up? Or was this the only thing you could that was there? Well, I, your first instinct when you see something like this, oh, let's pull it out, you know. Right. But I, but uh, having been in the military and and some professional rescue or training and that kind of thing, I knew that if I pulled it out, it was going to kill him. Right. Uh, only because it had entered from above had he not bled to death. And it didn't. And as he stood, as he stood there, he had. I mean, I checked him out. He had blue gums, and his breath just smelled like death. That you know. smell, yep. Uh -huh. So, uh, and it, I, and it looks like he didn't I noticed, bleed a lot, did he? From when no, he... just a trickle, just yeah. a trickle of blood down the side and underneath. Not much, uh, but it had been raining too. So I figured it rained all in the wound, you know, and he had. He'd been standing there a while because there was a big pile of manure behind him that I didn't notice, you know. 
Yeah. Well, the first call was uh, to the vet, of course, my emergency vet. Uh, I put a plug in for him because he's a great veterinary. He's uh, about 30 minutes from me. His name is Dr. Eric Martin. And Dr. Martin's been my vet for years and years. And uh, I told him, I said, be prepared for what you see. Um, about that time, I see I'd already called Kara and our neighbor to come on over and train the other horse. And I called Kara, and she said later on I was... She couldn't understand what I was saying because I was so frantic. Now, she's your girlfriend, right? Right. I have six okay. years. Okay. been dating her six years. And so she got there shortly thereafter, and uh, I took her around and showed her, and she took that picture that you guys are looking at and uh, sent it by phone to Dr. Martin so that he would be prepared for what he was going to see when he got there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this no, picture is giving me the willies just looking at it. I can't imagine finding my horse with that big branch sticking out of his side. Was well, the, he, only um... reason he, the only reason he's alive is because he was an endurance animal. He was in great shape. Yeah. I mean, he was in top-notch uh, uh... running condition. If it had been either one of my other two, they wouldn't be here with us. And how was like, he mentally, emotionally? Was he, when he saw you, did, did you know, was uh, he, he, like... He neighed at me when I came down originally, but he was in shock. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. uh, uh, Dr. Martin got there, and uh, Dr. Martin said, uh, he called me over and he says, we need to consider euthanizing him. He's mm -hmm. suffering and uh, not being one to want the horse to suffer. He, uh, he... He mentioned to Kara and I that he he would consider euthanizing him, and uh, we the three of us got together and uh, I said, "Is there nothing else we can do for him?" He said, "Well, I obviously can't perform any kind of surgery that's necessary here in the barn." He said, "We're going to have to get him to uh, some sterilized environment." So we thought of the uh, University of Tennessee Large Animal Clinic. That's where he went, and uh, he went through the barn himself under his own power and with a little assistance got on the trailer, the two-horse trailer that uh, our friend who was going to bring the other horse over was already hooked up, thank goodness. Well, now, how did you keep uh, the stick, the branch? I wouldn't call it a stick, it's a branch. How did you keep the branch from hitting the side of the trailer? Well, he, it was on his left side. We loaded him on the right side rear of the trailer, and uh, the girls pushed on that side as we got him in, and I rode with him to keep it off the center divider. Yeah. And with Dr. Martin following us in case the worst were to happen, and we were having to put him to sleep uh, on the way over there. Because it's about a 35-minute drive to UT. So, and then on the way over there, he ate hay, believe it or not. And then when we got to UT, he unloaded from the trailer on his own, and he walked about 30 yards to where they uh, gave him a local. And he stood through the entire surgery and... Um, Went through fine. He looked good after the surgery. Uh, I met Dr. Nicholas Frank there, who was the uh, doctor that was on duty. And Dr. Frank uh, told me, uh, you know, that basically his blood work came back, that he had stood there between 10 and 12 hours waiting on me Ooh. to get to him. That's what the toxins indicated in his blood. Uh. And he also informed me that uh, the surgery itself was not the was not the end of it. It was the beginning that the bacterial infections that were in the lung, uh, what had happened basically is this three-foot-long limb had missed the heart by about eight inches. It had broken two ribs on its way to leaning against the lung. So did it And the left the lung? lung was collapsed. The, right. No, uh, there was some lung damage, but it didn't, punct it didn't physically puncture the lung at that time, I don't think. Huh. When they took it out, his left lung collapsed, but uh, when they uh, got it in taken care of and stable, they put a, a sponge in the top of it that was coated with plastic, basically, and left it open. And they also packed rolls of gauze in it in the following weeks. Uh, at one time, it was taking four rolls of gauze, and this, you know, the doctor who was doing it, Dr. Claudia Cruz over there, is a little bitty woman. She was had her old arm in him at times, and he was just standing there. I mean... I, mean, yeah. horse, I hope, I hope our inherent... audience isn't eating breakfast or lunch right well, now. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the horse inherently knows that people are there to take care of it. And that's that's why he even made it back to the barn. I have an idea. He knew where he could get help. Wow. So they so, so they removed the limb and uh, uh, they kept the wound open. How long was he at the hospital then? Uh, he was at the hospital until April the 18th. Wow, four months then, huh? 
Yeah, they originally they had given him a two percent chance to survive. Um, we actually lost him once. He died during a rib resection surgery when both lungs collapsed. Um, and I thought we were going to have to euthanize him that day. He almost died three other times. One time his platelet count, um, he had 11 bags of plasma. He had gone through one whole, whole donor series, and his body was uh, having an allergic reaction to the two different types of plasma. And a normal horse has about 100,000 platelets or more. He got down to 16,000, which means if even if a blood vessel would have busted or anything or any internal bleeding at all, he'd have bled to death. Um, they used experimental drugs on him to increase the count of that, and they also did, uh, you know, uh, gave him platelet-rich plasma from a donor horse. Um, a blood one of, a blood clot passed through his brain and knocked him over one night oh like a domino. Oh so we all almost lost him that night, and uh, then he's been in respiratory distress twice as well. So he's gone through hyperbaric tra uh, chamber treatments. Uh, UT is one of the only facilities in the nation that has a hyperbaric chamber for horses. I found out. Um, let's see what else. How's he doing now? Let's get to let's get to now, and then we'll, then we'll we'll continue with the story, just so that everybody uh, can get a play. Let's hear some good uh, news. <laughs> well, given a two percent chance uh, to survive, now he's at home. Uh, last Saturday, he uh, we took him back one time. He had to stay back at UT for another week uh, recently because of a little pocket of infection, and they wanted to get to it. So he's been over, he had been over there till Sunday, but um. He got loose Saturday and ran through UT's campus, okay? Let's just put it that way. He took a tour. i never seen so many vet students and vets running after a horse in my life all over campus. So he, he took the grand tour of campus on Saturday, <laughs> and he went home Sunday, and he's uh, he's on two antibiotics right now, but he's resting comfortably in the barn. And uh, Dr. Frank has told me that he has very little lung damage after all of this, and uh that uh, he, he's only going to be limited to what he limits himself to. So you never know. Uh, I think at the very least it'll be a pleasure horse. He may could actually go back and do endurance again. Wow. So those are the good news. That's the good news. So he's made it through all this stuff. It's and the it, good news. I think there's, a, the, the, uh, Helena, one of the most amazing parts of this story. Obviously, this is just amazing, what, the, him overcoming these obstacles. And, and you can't stop looking at that picture. I had to take it off my screen. Um, was one of, one of the things you and I talked about, Gary, is what's happened after. Uh, you, and and the, the power of Facebook. Oh, and let me tell you about Facebook. Uh, a friend of ours had originally uh, set up the website on Facebook, his fan page, for 20 or 30 of us that were close-knit group to keep touch of the horse. So you wouldn't have to keep calling each other and telling you what it was up to, you know, how, what he was doing, what was going on with him. So there, originally there were only 20 to 30 fans, and now the Facebook fan page has grown to over 9,600 fans worldwide. He has 600 fans in England. He has uh, 250 fans in Australia. He has fans in Canada, Mexico, Singapore. Uh, we uh, sold shirts. We did everything we could to raise funds. Uh, as you can well imagine, the vet bill was rather high. Um, so... So we've done everything we could to raise funds, so we sold, sold T-shirts and mugs and travel bags and all kinds of stuff like that, and we've shipped those shirts all over the world. Wow. Uh, the, the outpouring of, of love and prayer for this horse has been amazing. Little horse in Tennessee, you know, and then you got people from Singapore following him, you know. And, and I think you raised, you, you, what was your bill? Your bill must have been out of this world for the vet. It is. Uh, it was in excess of thirty-five thousand oh, dollars. See, you thought yours was bad, Helena. But you know what? It doesn't. You you <laughs> you don't spend that all at once. You you know, a thousand dollars here, three thousand well, dollars there. Even with yeah. good credit, even with good credit, you guys, and in today's world, I was only able to get credit up to about ten thousand dollars unsecured. Right. Uh, through a through a care credit card. I don't know if right. you guys are familiar with them, yep, but especially yep. for animals. Right. Uh, I was only able to get ten thousand um, dollars. Kara and I were willing to go deeper into debt than we both could really afford if we'd have had to. But uh, I, these fans on Facebook started. We never asked for a dime from anybody, but they just started contributing. Oh. And uh, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars at the time. We were running very, very close when the bill was at twenty-two, and the vets weren't charging for any services. They were. They had all fallen in love with the horse. So 
they didn't want me to take him home, you know, so uh, they were not billing for services. The only thing I was getting charged for was lab work and drugs at one time, I think. And then all of a sudden, from out of the blue, somebody somewhere in this country decided they would call and check on him. And it was an anonymous donor, and they donated $11,600. Oh, to the my Lord. God. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. So then oh my we I just got eventually, eventually that put us at about $31,000. But eventually, you'd be ima- you can imagine how quickly the vet bill went up to that point. Right. Yeah. Once they had that money, it yeah. went up there pretty quick. <laughs> All of a sudden, it went so, up. <laughs> so then I... I had to go out of town on business, and I said, I, look, guys, i got to take him home. we got to be getting close to the $30,000 mark. And they were like, no, you don't need to be taking him home. Uh, one of the doctors over there, Dr. Calc, told me, she says, uh, you can leave him here. And I said, uh, no, I really can't leave him here. Uh, you don't understand. I cannot leave him here. And she looked at me again, and she goes, uh, you can leave him here. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, your anonymous donor has called back every three to five days, and she says, uh, According to my last instructions, you're not to receive another bill. <laughs> right? Oh my God. Now, how did you <laughs> how did you get yourself through this? Like, what what did you what conversations did you have with yourself at every milestone or every time he suffered a setback? What did you say? Well, to the yourself? one I the one I remember the most was is is the day I thought I was going to have to put him to sleep. I was talking to my brother in the car, and I I told my brother I said. Uh, I'm going to go inside and give him permission to euthanize my youngest son. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I do. It's, it's, a, it's harrowing when this is happening to an animal you love that you consider. Karen and I don't have any kids, so these are our kids. The way we've always looked at horse ownership is uh, they become them. You don't take them on unless you can make them members of your family. Right. So, so they couldn't be any closer to us than blood. So it's like having a child in the hospital. And it's critically injured, and yet in the back of your mind you got Jiminy Cricket saying you're at thirteen five, you're at twenty two five, you know, bill wise. Right. right. It's absolutely it's absolutely devastating. Um, to go through it emotionally is one thing, but to have emotionally and financially is just unbelievable the amount of pressure. I took a second job uh, at night, and I just finished it up. Probably uh, Monday night was my last night over there. Um, a friend of mine was good enough to create the job for me because he knew what kind of condition I was in. Oh, he's also an Amigo fan, you know. <laughs> and he bought a T-shirt and has contributed money to him, too, you know. So it's uh, it's been rough, uh, to say the least. That That's what's led us to create Amigos Fund at UT. Uh, mm. I can tell you guys about that if you yeah, want to. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. Uh, Amigos Fund is basically set up for other critically injured sport horses. And the purpose of Amigos Fund is to completely remove the financial stress of somebody that finds himself in a similar situation. It's for horses that are age 5 to 15 and uh, have, to be, you know, have to get a good vet reference from them. And if they're critically injured and they were competing in a sport, it doesn't matter what the percentage of survival is, as long as they have some semblance of a chance of going back to a normal life, it would it would apply. It's not to uh, put out a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. <laughs> the fund's supposed to build up to twenty five or thirty thousand dollars and be dispensed all at one time. Take care of somebody's bill completely. I like that, and that's called the Amigo Fund, and it's at the University of Amigos Tennessee. Amigos Fund or uh, Amigos Legacy of Hope. It's been set up through the University of Tennessee. And uh, everything that goes in there now is tax deductible. I've been making some guest appearances with, uh, I, I don't know if they'll like it, but I'll, I'll mention the feed company, Purina, with sure. Purina. And uh, they, um, Purina's been very good to us through the whole thing. Um, they uh, have taken me to co-ops and things of that nature to present a PowerPoint slideshow, that I, and I give out a handout. Uh, I, I've never asked for a penny for Amigo, but I don't have any problem at all asking for somebody else's horse that now, what, benefits from Amigo's fund. So. How can our listeners donate to that fund? Um, they can send checks to twenty. Uh, the University of Tennessee Large Animal Clinic. The checks can be made out. That it's the address is twenty four oh seven River Road, Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> I'm not sure of the zip code. Okay, we'll put that in our show but, notes too for everybody. We'll also put but, uh, the, we'll also they put can, the they can go in, in there. They can go on his. They can go to his fan page. You can okay. also, if you want to follow more or find out more about the media that he's received, 
I mean, my gosh, the horse has been in a German magazine. I couldn't even <laughs> read a word of it. The only thing I knew was his picture and my name and his name. You know, at Cavallo Magazine, Germany. They sent me two editions of it, you know. So anyway, um, you can go to www.amigo1amazinghorse.com, and uh, it will give you a link to his fan page and all of his media through, uh, I think, through April the 1st is on there now. I think that's how far we've updated it. Okay, I see that here. Yeah, it's Amigo1AmazingHorse.com. Yep. Well, I'll tell you what, this is, uh, uh, what an inspiring story, and you did a brave thing. I mean, you knew, you knew when you took him to that hospital that this was going to be a long adventure, a very costly adventure, but you did it anyway. Well, he had a 2% chance to live, but what are you going to do? He's a member of your family. Right. Yep, uh, truth right. be known, guys, I'd have gone door to door if I'd have had to. Right. Aww. Well, it, I, what an amazing story. You can also just go to Facebook and search for Amigo, One Amazing Horse, and you can become a fan on there. Let's help drive that over 10,000. You're at 96.49 now. So uh, <laughs> maybe we could uh, drive that over 10,000 fans. You know, I have to tell you this. We, we keep track of uh, Facebook fan pages in the horse world. You're one of very few that are 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 going to be over 10,000. Very yeah, I, few. Oh, my. You're well, I mean, the, the fans, I, I, co- I communicate with them twice daily, once in the morning, usually once in the evening. One lady told me at one point, I think I got the post in late at night, and she types back in. She goes, good, I can go to bed now. I've read Amigos. <laughs> and, and they have really been on me to write a book. So I've started writing the book about him. I have no idea how to write a book, guys, but I'm on <laughs> Chapter 12. <laughs> okay. So so I'm, I'm writing the book about his uh, his incident injury, the Facebook page, the vets who have been so great at UT Hospital. And uh, I, I it, I think it's good. I don't know yet. We'll find out. And well, you know what? Even if it isn't, we're going to buy it. We're going to buy it anyway. <laughs> we're going to buy it. And say I did take an excerpt uh, from Chapter 3 on the Facebook page, I'll admit. That just tells how I met him and, you know, my general impressions of him at the beginning and how we developed a little bit. Now, he has uh, a nickname so I, on Facebook, too, doesn't he? Oh, he's got a bunch of them. Uh, he's, his nicknames are Meekster. Meekster, and, uh, I see that, yeah. Meekster and Migo, and uh, I, I've called him Paz, which is short of Pazon. I've also <laughs> called him uh, Red Colt, and uh, he's also been known as my champion. I, he's uh, he's pretty incredible. He's the son of Count Gallagher, who was a uh, one of the more famous racing Arabs. Came off the racetrack. Huh. Well, this has certainly been fascinating. We encourage everybody to stop over and become a fan of Amigo. And, and uh, well, Amigo's dad, um, whose, name I've, his Gary. whose name I've totally forgotten. Uh, <laughs> Amigo's dad's fun. <laughs> uh, congratulations on, on uh, what, what we hope is a very, very happy ending for the two of you. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Helena. Our pleasure. And we're glad to hear he's doing well. He is. We'll keep you posted. All the okay. Best. Okay. So um, let me just wipe my eyes and blow I my nose. I warned and... you ahead of time. Uh, <laughs> I was crying in the middle of that. You know what? You know, I've I've heard stories of horses being seriously injured um, and coming back from whatever. I've never heard of a horse going through as many medical challenges as this one has. But the best part about this story is that you cannot deny the closeness, the relationship, the attachment, the respect, the love between Gary and Amigo. Right. It's he's right. The you can't help but these horses become your family. And you know what? What are you going to do? Say no? I'm not going to fix you. You know, and, it's and that would have been very easy to do once you. And we're going to put the pictures here of Amigo with with the huge branch sticking out of his side on our show notes so you can appreciate what is huge what we're talking about here it's two to three inches thick and three feet long and what do you see about a foot of it sticking out of the horse all right yeah okay we gotta i can't look okay i know and i couldn't stop looking when we were talking to him i had finally had to take the page away because i couldn't stop looking but but it's an amazing story it has a happy ending amigos doing well they might even ride together again i mean it's just an amazing story and gary is such a down-to-earth guy you know what? And even if they never they never ride again, Amigo's job is done. He has brought. Um, I know he's changed Gary's life, and probably everybody who's following him, everybody who participated in his recovery, 
you know that this horse has touched lives and changed people. Yes. And, and, and his, and, that's, you know, his job is done yep. as far as I'm concerned. Bless he's his, brought, his elite wine heart. He's brought tens of thousands of people together that wouldn't have been together before. And, yeah. uh, I uh, just, you know, and I didn't realize either till I started doing some reading that impaling on branches and stuff like that is a, is a, com- is a fairly common reason for horse deaths. Um, and I hmm. never thought about it. We always had pastures that had woods, you know, and you just, you just, just, well, one of those I things mean, every pasture's, about. you know, bordered by something. It's yeah. not like pastures go on forever, but it's so funny how you think, you know, um, you, you give horses all this space. It's like, you know what? They're going to find trouble. Right. Exactly. <laughs> doesn't matter. You could have a thousand, a million acres. Somehow horses are going to find trouble. Not that Amigo went out looking for it, but that just seems to be the Murphy's Law of horse ownership, you know? We had a horse that we had to put down after it, well, it died, actually, very quickly. It ran into the side of our indoor. We had a pasture that the indoor was part of the, you know, pasture, you know? And the horses got running, and this horse ran up and hit it, hit, actually hit the building the wrong way and broke its neck um, and was dead within two or three minutes. Uh, so, you know, the, uh, you're right, absolutely right. And the, this, the motto is, if a horse can find a way to hurt itself, it's going it will. to. Yep. yep, exactly. And, and yep. they do. Yep. <laughs> sort that's of like one of children the, that way, I think. That's one of the, um, the isms, the idioms, what is something, idioms that Jennifer taught me. You know, there, was, if, there were two that I take with me everywhere I go. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. That's, right. That's the most popular one. And if if there's trouble to be found, a horse will find it. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, that's the story of Gary and Amigo. And go to Facebook and just search for Amigo, and you can follow him there. Let's put him over 10,000. I have something just fun for you right now. Real quick. This will only take a couple minutes, but I, you, you and I are... I think the audience has figured out now, the ones that have listened from the beginning, know that we're a little bit ADD. A little? Uh, Yeah, a lot ADD. Between the two of us, I don't think we could concentrate on any one thing for more than a minute. (laughs) It's amazing we get through these shows. And and that, by the way, everybody, that's the reason we do different topics. We can't stay on one for any period of time. So that's why our shows lately have been covering many different things. Last week we had six guests because, you know, we just can't pay attention. Well, <laughs> no, because you just couldn't decide on oh, one. No. That's right. Have them all. So now, do you know the show Car Talk on NPR? One of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows ever. And of course, you know, uh, Click and Clack the Tappet Brothers are up there in Boston near you. Yep. And out of Harvard Square. I, I can't say that. Okay. Can you say that? With the I, I'm from New York. Have it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did a thing on the beginning of one of their episodes that I have to play for you. You have not heard this yet. It is so me, and it is so you, it's unbelievable. So let's take a listen. Okay. Welcome to Car Talk from National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the new acronym division here at Car Talk Plaza. Yes, and the acronym du jour is <laughs> AAADD, which stands for Age-Activated Attention Deficit <laughs> Disorder. Now, you may have this, or you may ha- know someone who has this. Yes. I certainly do. Yes. <laughs> and this, I guess this little write-up, to describe it, is sort of like a little diary entry. Here it is. I decide to wash the car. I start toward the garage, and I notice the mail on the table. Okay, I'm going to wash the car, but first I have to go through the mail. I lay the car keys down on the desk. I discard the junk mail, and I notice the trash can's full. All right, I'll just put the bills on my desk and take the trash out. But since I'm going to be near the mailbox anyway, I'll pay these bills first. Where's the checkbook? Oh, there's only one check left. My extra checks are there in the desk. Oh, there's the Coke I was drinking. I'm going to look for those checks. But first, I have to put my Coke further away from the computer. Or maybe I'll just pop it in the fridge to keep it cold for a while. I head towards the kitchen. And my flowers catch my eye. I need some water. I set the Coke on the counter. Ooh, there are my glasses. I've been looking for them all morning. I better put them away first. (laughs) I fill the container with water and head for the flower pots. Ah, someone left the TV remote in the kitchen. We will never think to look in the kitchen tonight when we want to watch TV. So I better put it back in the family room where it belongs. I splash some water into the pots. And onto the floor, I throw the remote onto a soft cushion on the sofa, and I head back down the hall, trying to figure out what it was I was going to do. <laughs> At the end of the day, the car's not washed, the bills are unpaid, the coke is sitting on the kitchen counter, the flowers are half watered, the checkbook still has only one check in it, and I can't seem to find my car keys. 
when I try to figure out how come nothing got done today, I'm baffled because I know I was busy all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, is that scary. <laughs> That, that is so scary yeah, accurate. Yeah. That's my day every day, every single day. I know. It's mine, too. And I think part of it, too, is not only do we have ADD, but we work at home. I, yeah. So that yeah. makes it worse. That, you know, there's just all these things you keep saying. I got to do that. I got to do that. And by the time you're done, it's three hours later and you haven't done a damn thing. But, and that's just going from the office to the kitchen. <laughs> This is no joke, people. This is no joke. And, you know, he could also throw in, oh, nobody fed the fish. I got to feed the fish. Well, you know what? I'm looking at the fish tank. The fish tank needs to be changed. <laughs> oh, my God. You go in, you go to get the fish food. It's in where the cat litter. Oh, I got to change the cat litter. Oh, it's and just... I haven't brought the dog out. Oh, and uh, I'm bringing the dog out. I might as well get the mayo. Uh, <sighs> you know, just, oh. I, I just laughed so hard when I heard that the first time. And thanks to the Card Talk guys for letting us borrow that. Um, <laughs> So we hope everybody enjoyed that. Well, Helena, we've plain run out of time. Let's uh, let's get out of here. We'll be back next week with another show. Who knows what it'll be? Twelve guests, sixteen guests. <laughs> who knows? And we'll, we'll be doing something. But you can follow, find our show notes and all the links out to uh, Gary and Amigo right at stablescoop.com, episode number ninety four. And also, you can give us feedback. We love getting your emails, and uh, we, we read every one of them. We try and get back to every one of them. You can do that through the contact link on our website. And also, you can follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio and Helena at Helena underscore B-E-E. -E. And we want to thank our sponsors. That would be Equestrian Collections at EquestrianCollections.com and The Barnworks at TheBarnworks.com. Be sure to visit all the other great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. And don't forget Helena's and I's new show, the Tack and Habit radio show at tackandhabit.com. It's right. fun. My wife listened to the last episode, episode three, and I could hear her laughing. She was in the bedroom at the time, and I could hear her laughing, and she, she made it a point to come in and say to me, that is the best show I've heard of any of your shows yet. <laughs> and she's hard to please. She yeah. is. She's tough. <laughs> she doesn't listen to a lot of the shows, but uh, I, that's just the wife thing, I think. But she <laughs> loves that show. She said it's just so funny and entertaining and, and light. She just loves it. So... And and she, you know what? She's a little bit of a gadget geek, too. Yes, so she, she likes is. the fact that we're talking about new stuff on the market. Yep. And it was we, we like that show. I think it's one of my favorite shows now. I, I think so, too. That. Yeah. I know. You know, I was listening to um, um, Horse Tip Daily. Uh, I don't know what I was doing, but I was listening to a bunch of episodes of Horse Tip Daily, and I said, I just can't wait till we have a collection of Tack and Habit shows so I can go back and listen to them, too. I know. And it, they're timeless because the products are just there. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's good. All right. So everybody take a listen to that at tackandhabit.com. Well, Helena, we'll be back again next week with... I don't know, some kind of scoop. We just have a cool show planned for today. I didn't really tell you much about today, did I? No, you left me in the dark. I did. <laughs> Is that you this time? Yes, I hung up on you. Sorry. <laughs> And, of course, we want to thank our sponsors. And that would be... Oh, let's cut that. Are you Brian. cueing me again? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to. <laughs> oh, let's do that again, Brian. <laughs>